Greetings, everyone. Brad here with Mild Manor DDC. Hope everybody's doing well out there. So today we're going to look at a knife from a maker that I like quite a bit, uh, from a company that's known for making some uh, mostly budget line, budget type uh, of knives. But, uh, you know, that's perfectly fine. And in fact, I feature a lot of those type of knives here on my channel. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and get underway. We are looking today at this interesting knife. This is the CRKT, or Columbia River Knife and Tool. Uh, they are a Oregon-based company uh, just south of us here in Washington State. Um, and uh, it is the Sketch, uh, designed by Lucas Burnley. There you go, Burnley Design. And there's been uh, previous iterations of the sketch, and the sketch actually came out of, uh, at least my understanding, he did what he called a, a sketch 365 project, where he did a sketch a day for 365 days, so, f you know, one sketch for a, a day for a year. And this was one of the knives that came out of that project. Um, I think he's had a couple that have come out of that, but this is this is one that came out of that. So that's pretty cool, I think. Um you know, uh, one of the things I like a lot about Lucas Burnley is that he really tries to... Um, I think he really values sort of, uh, I don't know how to say this, I get not aggressive looking knives. So knives that aren't necessarily aggressive, but, but get the job done. Uh, he, he seems to focus more in the, uh, more sort of compact, you know, smaller, medium sized type knives. Uh, and I just appreciate that. I, I don't think knives all have to look like, uh, you know, stabby weapons. Um, <laughs> uh, and, you know, we all have them. We all like, you know, a certain aesthetic. And I'm certainly guilty of liking um, certain types of blade styles. And, you know, clip points are one of my favorites among them. But I also appreciate the the desire to create knives that don't necessarily have as much of an aggressive look either. So you kind of have that option out there. And he's one of those designers I think does that uh, very well. So with that, let's go ahead and get into this. We'll just go ahead and do a classic mild manner review today. So we'll talk blade and action, handles, scales, uh, hardware, and uh, carry. So let's, uh, and ergos, I guess, is part of that, is part of that, it's carry. So <laughs> so let's uh, let's go ahead and get underway. And uh, we'll do, we'll talk uh, specs real quick, just get those out of the way. So we've got a blade length, oh, and I should mention on specs, so... What I found on, on the Blade HQ website, they usually do phenomenal specs, so I really compliment them on that, But um, and I usually trust them quite a bit. Their specs did differ from what I saw on CRKT's website, so I'm going to go with what CRKT has. They're the maker of the knife, you know. so I figure let's just err on the side of using their stats. So uh, with that, they've got a blade length here of 2.89, a blade thickness, <laughs> they say 0.11, uh, this looks thicker than that to me. This feels more like a, I don't know, 13 maybe, or even a 14, particularly up here. But anyways, that's what they say. So that's what we're going with. Um, a handle length here of 3.875, a uh, handle thickness of 0 0.48 inches, and that gives us an overall here of uh, 6.65 and a weight, <laughs> not unsubstantial weight here of 3.7 ounces. So, you know, not a not a necessarily lightweight little bugger, but we'll talk about that when we get into scales and other parts. So, so let's go ahead and get it away and let's talk blade. It's got a really interesting blade. I actually think this is an attractive blade. I think it's cool looking. I think it's very utilitarian. Um, it is an 8CR uh, 13 MOV which isn't labeled anywhere on here that I can see, but that's what it is, and that's pretty standard CRKT fare. It is a sheep's foot style blade, sheep's foot style blade, although um, they are calling it a K-tip, so sort of envision, you know, the kind of legs of the K kicking out right there. I think that's where they get that, uh, K-tip blade. Either way, sheep's tip, K-flick, K-tip, whatever you want to call it, um, this it's it's very conducive to detail work, you know, that kind of thing, either whittling or carving or drawing. I mean, anyways, it's it's a it's a handy blade shape. Um, not always my style, but but I think it's pretty darn handy. So kind of hard to argue with there. Now it is a satin finish, uh, which I think is attractive, and it's got a pretty good looking swedge on it here. And I apologize, actually, if you hear any music in the background now that I think about it. Uh, the kids and my wife are watching a movie out there, and it's pretty loud. So if you get any, <laughs> if you hear any <laughs> any Disney-type uh, music sounds. Let's get down to business. Oh. The yeah, that's where they're coming from. So just sit back and enjoy them. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, but no, where was I? Oh, here with the blade. Yeah, so it's got. They've done some nice job with the swedge here. You know, it's, I don't know that the swedges are perfectly even uh, throughout the knife. Yeah, I feel like they're close, but yeah, not bad at all. Uh, it's got a pretty pretty you know sturdy tip, uh, as we mentioned with that uh, K tip there. And uh, it, they say, see now, you tell me, I don't know. That looks like a hollow grind to me. I feel like there's, shoot, this thing won't focus, will it, for me? There we go. I feel like that's a, a, a hollow grind. It feels like a hollow grind. It certainly looks like a hollow grind to me. Um, they say it's a flat grind. I don't know. Um, I can just tell you what I think and what I feel, and what I feel is a uh, hollow grind, but either way. And then uh, the last thing I kind of wanted to mention on blade, a little bit of jimping up here. Nice, obviously a blade hole, which is the primary use for opening. We'll talk about that in action. Uh, but they did a very nice grind on this. You can see the uh, choil there is done very well. They didn't miss any of that. It's away from the um, plunge line there. It's very sharp. Came out of the box that way. It was great. Um, no, no arguments at all there. And it, it feels pretty thin behind the edge, which again leads me to believe it's probably a hollow uh, grind. But... There we go. Neither here nor there. And um, yeah, so let's let's go ahead and talk about action. So it is a thumb deployed knife. So and it's kind of weird. You kind of have to. I'm not huge on the. So it it comes out great, and it's it, in the sense that once you can get it out, <laughs> uh, it it flings open very smoothly. And I don't have any complaints with that. It's it's an odd shape, and there isn't a huge amount of room here. As you can see, it's not the biggest. Um, yeah, it's not the biggest opening ever, and you kind of have to, it's a unique sort of direction that you got to push it. When you do, it comes flying out, and, ah, see, you kind of, it's, it's, I've been messing with it, you know, for a while now, and it's just a little, there you go. But when you, when you get a hang of it, <laughs> it's a little, I'm, I think doing it under the camera is maybe a little different, but uh, once I got the hang of it a little better, yeah, you know, whatever, it's fine. And no complaints. I mean, you've got, you know, very solid lockup. Like I said, it opens. I think the action's pretty nice. It's not drop shutty by any means, but... Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, but I think the, the detent's actually done pretty... It's very well for a knife sort of of this size and cost. You know, I couldn't shake it out as hard as I was trying to do it. So there you go. And you can sort of see... You know, you get that detent action where it finally pulls it back in. Boop. Yep, there you go. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't have a huge amount of, um, yep, there you go. <laughs> I don't have a huge amount of complaint on the action. I think it's it's adequate for a knife, um, for for a knife at this at this level and considering sort of what they were going for here. I do have some complaints with, and I know this isn't necessarily necessarily an action issue, but yeah, you can see it's not uh, centered. Didn't come out of the box centered, and I tried to fiddle with it a bit. Just couldn't get it quite centered. Uh, free spinning pivots. I mean, they came out. I didn't get the sense there was any Loctite or anything, but it was, it's just, yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that. I don't know if it's just washers that aren't. And you should know, since we're talking about that, that's a little bright. Let me see if I can tone that down a little here. There we go. Uh, it is riding on Teflon washers. So there you go. If I go to act, jeez, oh, there you go. Teflon washer. You can see the little white rings in there. So I don't know if maybe one of them is bigger than the other or fatter than the other ones, thicker or whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's not centered, but I have no complaints really with the action. It's smooth. It's not gritty. It, it opens, it locks up. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's fine. Um, Handle, scales, and hardware. Let's talk. So we've got um, stainless steel handles and scales here, which is why you're getting that 3.7 ounces. Uh, so it's not lightweight. They're not milled out or anything like that. They didn't make any effort to do that. Uh, it is a frame lock, as you can see. They did put in an over-travel stop, which I think is pretty cool. Um, you know, they didn't have to do that at a night's this price. It does have a weird... Listen to this. Yeah, so I'm... <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really, it's not really lock stick. It's almost like, because uh, it's not doing that on the on the base of the tang of the blade there. It's doing it like as it comes back from the, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's sort of funky. I'm not sure what that's about. But anyways, it's there. Um, so, so there you go. Stainless steel scales. I think they're done really nice. I really, they're very smooth. Everything's very well chamf chamfered on this knife. There are no sharp edges apart from the blade, uh, as it should be. Um, so I compliment them on that. Done very nice. I also think I kind of like this lime green. It's not going to be to everybody's taste, 
But some of the original the original version of this knife with the black and red, and I think they were more plasticky type handles or something. I'll put a picture up there. But uh, this, I think, looks miles and miles better. I think this is a cool, attractive little knife. And you've got a, a very flush, um, similarly toned, you know, color matching uh, backspacer there. Well done. I think looks good. It's 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 a little shimmery. If you can see that, it's kind of a shimmery. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that's obviously where they where they threw in the lanyard. Opportunity to do a lanyard. So yeah, I mean, I think scales and hardware are done pretty well. Um, I don't have a ton of complaints there. I think they're they're smooth. They do the job. It's a stainless. They're stainless steel scales. So what do you want? I mean, <laughs> they're going to hold up, but they're also going to be a little heavier. That's kind of the, the long and short of that. So so there you go. Oopsie, I just, it's, it's a little funky. Okay, so uh, carry and ergonomics. Uh, you know, it carries just fine. <laughs> so they did a really good pocket clip here. I actually really am impressed with what CRK did, CRKT did here. They've got fairly recessed screws, about as recessed as you can go. I mean, they're just a little bit of some nubs sticking up there, but done really well. It's a nice deep carry pocket clip, although it's not deep carry. <laughs> and I don't know why they sort of did that that way. Um, it's just kind of interesting to me. So... Yeah, there you go. So you got this part of it sticking out. Now, again, I've said this before in other videos. I tend to not gripe on that too much if I feel like, you know, if they'd have tried to do that, it would have really sacrificed the uh, sort of aesthetic of the knife and they were just trying to deal with it. They could have inched this up. So this one, this this clip just sort of feels like it's out in no man's land. Um, so I don't know what the, there's no reason they couldn't have at least put it up, you know, to here, for example. Um, so I, yeah, it's just, it feels, that's, it's an odd choice, but nevertheless, um, it's there. Like I said, it's done really well. I just don't understand why it's it's as far down as it is. So, anyways, uh, but other, so carry was fine. Ergonomics are fine too. Actually, they're decent. Um, I find this little little ridge here. You know, they could have they could have cut this down a bit more, and this could have been a bit more ambidextrous. And at this point, though, this knife in no way is ambidextrous. As you can see, the clip is here in the middle of nowhere, and it's not got an opportunity to be anywhere on this side, so there you go. But, but yeah, it's definitely, um, and you can almost see it sort of through there. Yeah, this, it's, you know, it's um, that little ridge there, you know, and they tried to do, you know, I don't know. But it, it's not the greatest. There is a little bit of hot spot here from, uh, that could use, you know, I don't know. You just sort of feel that it catches a little bit. I know everything's, I said everything's really well chamfered. It is. I, you know, this is where the lock bar kind of goes back and forth. That's a common snag point on knives, uh, just in general, frame lock knives in general. So mm -hmm. is what it is, but um, not too much to gripe about there. But yeah, but from an ergo standpoint, um, you know, it's a, it's for me, three, three and a half, I, I, three and three quarters, maybe in this position uh, right there. I think you can choke up. I don't think this is a knife that you're probably not going to be doing crazy hard use with anyways. And so they do give you, I think, enough room to put another finger here without being too... I mean, you're going to have to be careful. <laughs> no question. But but there is an opportunity for that. And then you do get that full four fingers on there. But yeah, I mean, so overall, you know, there's a little digging in again of this pocket clip. And it's this part of it, too. It's not even this part. And that's where I'm sort of like, why is this down here? I bet if they'd have backed that up just a little bit, it wouldn't have been so bad. So a little bit of hop, a little bit of a hot spot there from the clip. So, so yeah, so there you go. Um, you know, let's do quickly a size comparison because I think it's important on this knife. I didn't do it at the beginning, but I wanted to kind of leave it towards the end for a purpose. And that's because this knife is in many ways feels like a distant relative, uh, well, not so distant, but <laughs> they're both, you know, the CRKTs, they're both Lucas Burnley's, the Squid, the CRKT Squid, you know, in very, in some ways, very, very similar knives in the sense that, you know, you've got frame locks, stainless steel handles. I mean, even to the point of, um, see, look, they put that clip way more, you know, farther up here on this, you know, you got the three ridges here, uh, in the lock bar relief, you know, just, there's a lot of similarities here, uh, 8CR 13 MOV blades, um, you know, the, the sketch is definitely bigger, but, uh, I know the squid was Burnley's first, um, collaboration with CRKT. So there you go. This is kind of like the big pop-up for him, I guess. But yeah, I mean, these, these are, I think these are, you know, they feel like family and that's for good reason. And I think there's a lot of design. You can definitely tell these came from a, the same designer. So there you go with the squid. Uh, so it is a little bigger than the squid and the squid's been in my collection a long time, actually. Let's go ahead and do something a uh, knife I don't usually feature on this channel, and that's the uh, Spyderco Delica. 
Uh, I usually use a bug out as one of my standard, uh, everybody knows it, knife comparisons, but uh, I've got that somewhere else in the house at the moment. So, <laughs> so there you go. That's that. Um, a rat number one. Um, there you go. Um, so there you go. I mean, I think that's sufficient. So you, you, it's a perfectly kind of medium sized knife, medium to smaller size knife. So where do I sort of land on this overall? You know, it's so it's about 39 bucks, 40 bucks. If this wasn't, if this was just a few dollars cheaper, I would, I think I would classify this as a, a Brad's budget beauty. I probably would have done a Brad's budget beauty on this video. Now we all know that I, for, especially for those who've been following me, I arbitrarily set that, that <laughs> Brad's budget, and not totally arbitrarily, but uh, the, the Brad's budget beauty threshold at 35. Um, and so this one just creeps up just a little above that. But I think this gets an honorable mention for a Brad's budget beauty. Uh, it's, it's pretty darn close and it's a, it's a, it's a fine knife. And for 40 bucks, you know, yeah, you're not getting the greatest steel. You've, you know, I've got some little quibbles with kind of the action uh, and deployment more than the action itself, actually. Uh, you know, it rides on Teflon, doesn't really bother me, but uh, I know that bothers some people. So there you go. Again, I don't think this is some huge heavy duty, and this isn't meant to be a huge heavy duty expensive knife. So there you go. I believe this also, this also, the squid also ran on Teflon, and I, you know, I've never had action problems with the squid. So. So, you know, overall, I think this is a pretty cool knife. I think it's pretty decent for the money. I'd like, to, you know, I wish the centering was a little better, you know, but on some level, CRKT, I mean, you're just going to get those kind of fit and finish foibles with them. That's sort of par for the course, it feels like these days. Uh, but they work with great designers and they, you know, in general, I think put out some really cool looking knives that are perfectly safe and perfectly functional and they're at very competitive prices. So, I can't, I can't argue with that on a lot of levels. So this is the sketch. I hope you've enjoyed this review. I think it's a pretty interesting little knife. Check it out uh, if you're inclined. I don't think it's, it's something you're going to regret. I think it's got a little pop of color. Makes it interesting. There you go. So CRKT squid, uh, squid, squetch. I was going to call it the squetch. I guess that would be the child of these two knives. Um, but no, so CRKT sketch. Cool little knife. Uh, interesting design there, Mr. Burnley. And with that, uh, be safe out there, be mild-mannered to one another, and all the best. Mm -hmm.